Hello, thanks very much for joining us for this latest edition of Talking Europe on France 24 with me, Catherine Nicholson. Now, in the week when Vladimir Putin launched referendums in Russian-held parts of Ukraine and made a thinly veiled threat to use nuclear weapons against the West, I'm speaking today to the European Union's High Representative for Foreign Affairs, Joseph Borrell. Mr Borrell, thank you for joining us from the sidelines of the United Nations General Assembly in New York. Thank you. Thank you to you. Let's start with that news I just mentioned in my introduction. Vladimir Putin launching these referendums in four provinces of Ukraine, which account for around about 15% of Ukraine's territory. What do you think Putin is trying to achieve here? What is his long game? Now, well, this uh, fake referendum, sham referendum, nobody can take seriously this way of consulting people in the middle of a war, overnight, uh, without any kind of debate, without a census. Um, I suppose that Putin wants to incorporate, wants to annexate these territories to Russia in order to have excuses to use uh, any kind of arms in this war. Well, as you say, it does seem perhaps inevitable that the Russians will announce at the end of this uh, that the provinces, in their eyes, did vote to join Russia. In that case, what do you see as the appropriate response from Europe, from the West? Nobody's going to recognise this annexation. Nobody is going to accept that these territories will become part of the Russian Federation. These are Ukrainian territories and they will remain Ukrainian territories for the international community. I don't think anyone of the people represented here this week at the United Nations will accept this kind of uh, procedures. And in front of that, we have to continue doing the same thing that we have done since the beginning of the war to continue supporting Ukraine military in order to defend themselves, to continue approving and maintaining the sanctions which are already in place, because the sanctions is like a diet, no? they have to be kept, they have to be implemented along the time if you want to have results. We can add more, but we have to keep the ones that we already have. And the third is the diplomatic outreach to everybody around the world in order to fight uh, the Russian narrative, to, to counter the Russian narrative and explain to people why they are suffering, because Russia is bombing Ukraine with missiles and with guns, and it is bombing the world economy with high prices of food and energy, created artificially in some cases by blocking the exports of Ukrainian wheat and creating a financial crisis at the end. The whole world is suffering the consequences of the Russian attack to Ukraine. And that has to be explained to the people in order to make them clear that it's not our sanctions which are the causes of the problem. Mm. Well, we, we have some very defiant words from the Russian president uh, this week. Uh, just to remind our viewers, on Wednesday it was a unex somewhat unexpected television statement from Vladimir Putin. He announced he was mobilising 300,000 re reservists into the army and threatened to use all means at Russia's disposal to, in his words, protect Russia. Uh, we can take a listen to a clip from that statement. They are no longer hiding the fact that Russia should be defeated by all means on the battlefield and then deprived of its political, economic, cultural and in general any kind of sovereignty with the complete plundering of our country. I want to remind those who allow themselves such statements about Russia that our country also has a variety of weapons of destruction and in some cases even more modern than those in NATO countries. And if the territorial integrity of our country is threatened, we will without question use all the means at our disposal to protect Russia and our people. This is not a bluff. Vladimir Putin speaking there a couple of days ago. Joseph Borrell uh, also listening to that, of course. Do you take this as a credible threat from the Russian president that he 
would use nuclear weapons against the West? It is certainly a threat and it's a big responsibility for many people in the world who has the atomic bomb to say if, uh, if we don't succeed on what they want, I will use the atomic bomb. We have to be prepared for this uh, eventuality and to work in order to avoid that this happens. But yes, certainly, it is a, it's a, it's a danger. And the danger, we have to be prepared for that. And as I said, to try to avoid these circumstances, we, that's what we are doing. Mm -hmm. Well, obviously, uh, we're talking about preparations in case this does come about. Uh, here within the European Union, uh, there's, uh, France is a nuclear-armed state. If Putin does go through with his threat, how does Europe react? Well, the first thing that we have to do is to avoid any kind of escalation, even the verbal escalation. We are not going to go into a course of threats. We are going to try to appeasement of the situation. Don't expect us saying, ah, me too, we too, we are, we also have arms. This is something that has to be avoided. We are not going to follow Putin on this path. Uh, well, uh, is diplomacy still an option, however, when you have one side threatening to use nuclear weapons against the other? We are not belligerents in this war, and we don't want to be belligerents in this war. We support Ukraine because Ukraine is a country who has been invaded. And we have to be very careful in order to avoid an escalation of the war, both vertically, by escalating the power of the arms being used, and geographically or horizontally, extending the war to other countries. This is a delicate balance, and we try to build this balance every day, supporting Ukraine without being engaged in the war. You spoke earlier about maintaining sanctions from the European Union, uh, like a diet, uh, you said. Um, European Union states have come together to support sanctions, but increasingly there have been varying degrees of support for those sanctions. Uh, with this new threat, uh, an existential threat in some senses, are the positions of the 27 EU member states converging or diverging? The European Union member states have shown uh, incredible unity, built very quickly and maintained for quite a long time. On approving sanctions, economic and personal sanctions against individuals and against sectors of the, in the Russian economy. Mm -hmm. And never seen the European Union reacting so quickly and so united. I know that there are some member states that are, they want to rethink about sanctions, but my opinion is that in front of these new threats and in front of the escalation of the war, the Europeans will keep its unity, will continue implementing sanctions, reinforcing them if needed, but uh, just to keep what we have already decided is a, is a big endeavour. Now, uh, since the announcement by Vladimir Putin of his first wartime mobilisation of uh, troops since World War II, we've seen large numbers of Russian nationals fleeing Russia into neighbouring countries, including, in some instances, uh, trying to access EU states. Uh, is it appropriate that Russian men fleeing mobilisation into the army to fight in Ukraine should be granted asylum in the European Union? Well, the European Union member states uh, have to keep their humanitarian obligations to provide asylum to the people who are asking for asylum for humanitarian reasons. We decided to restrict the number of visas for tourism because the tourists were not welcome in many countries and there were too many of them. But one thing is a tourist and another thing is someone escaping. This has to be analyzed as always, case by case. 
but it's to, to the member states to continue fulfilling their humanitarian obligations. And what do we see in the TV screens? These uh, mobilizations look like uh, more as a razzia, you know, a razzia, Italian word, that you take people out against their will. When you see the images of the Russian citizens taking the bus, saying goodbye to their families to go to the war, they don't, they don't look to have a lot of enthusiasm. Certainly this war will become a very unpopular war among the civilian people, among the civilian, civil society in Russia. And this will be another problem for Putin's regime. And just before we finish our interview, Mr. Borrell, I wanted also to have a word about uh, efforts to find a, a nuclear deal with Iran. Um, there have been various efforts there at the United Nations this week. Uh, however, no breakthroughs seem to be coming. I is it time to try and give up on trying to revive the deal with Iran, especially given the current domestic context in Iran? You say... Time to revive. <laughs> we have been uh, working, trying to revive the plan, uh, this deal, for months, especially before the summer. And we were quite close. And the interactions between the U.S. and the Iranians were proving being positive because we were closing uh, and closing the positions. Finally, some proposals from the Iranian side were not very constructive. And the conversions stop, and now we are in a stalemate. Uh, I don't think it's going to be broken, this stalemate, and, and on the next days. Mm -hmm. mm, but uh, my proposal as coordinator is on the table. I don't think there is a better solution, and I am still waiting for the parts to mm -hmm. accept this proposal. Mm -hmm. Joseph Burrell, that is all we have time for, but thank you very much for being with us once again here on France 24. Thank you. And thanks to you for watching. See you soon for more European news.